So Candace Owens recently did a three hour long interview with Andrew Tate, and of course, given the very serious accusations of human trafficking, coercion, violence, and rape, amongst other things, and yes, even though he says otherwise, those are all in the documents, but given these terrible accusations and the fact it's looking increasingly likely he'll do time for these alleged crimes, we can rely on a serious, well-respected journalist like Candace Owens to ensure she properly grilled the self-proclaimed pimp now crying his innocence. We can rely on such an outstanding professional to ask the right questions, really dig deep into whether these claims hold any weight either to clear his name once and for all, or do her duty as a media personality and give her audience enough information that they can decide for themselves. Furthermore, a media company like The Daily Wire, who are very keen to stand themselves apart from the half truths, manipulations, and outright lies of legacy media, a company who brand themselves as standing for morality, family values, and truth, their dedication to the truth so strong, in fact, that they hired Jordan Peterson, we can trust that a company like that, a company who asks us to trust them, we can put our faith in them that if one of their biggest personalities did an interview with an accused sex trafficker on their own platform, we can rest easy knowing that they'd never let her present misinformation, hide the full context of clips, and allow their audience, some of whom are paying, to hear outright lies without correcting them. No, they would never risk damaging their reputation by resorting to the same tricks and tactics that legacy media has been doing for decades. Well, except that they did. Candice did. How is it that myself, just some girl with a camera and no team behind me, had done enough research on the Tates and knows enough about this case that I noticed when Andrew Tate was telling provable lies in that interview, but Candace Owens, media personality and with all the resources of the Daily Wire behind her, apparently decided to interview Tate with zero knowledge of him, the case, or any of the facts? Like she'd rolled out of bed that morning and decided on a whim that it would be fun to interview one of the most controversial figures of the year and thought, yeah, I'll win it. This was some of the worst journalism I've seen in a very long time and the Daily Wire should hang its head in shame for this absolute dishonest disgrace. Why is it that none of you journalists can get your bloody act together? The BBC failed in their Tate interview because they decided to waste time virtue signalling and accusing him of misogyny and being mean rather than focusing on the facts of the criminal activity that he's accused of. You just gave him and his followers an easy out, congratulations. Tucker failed because he also apparently seemed to know nothing about anything. He allowed Tate to lie about his charges on camera, which a quick look over the court documents before the interview would have solved that problem. And Candace failed because she's tribalistic and ideological and has proved to me over recent months that she doesn't really have any values. Instead, she has a team and she'll abandon her supposed principles if she thinks someone is on her side. It's occurred to me that there are some people out there who believe that to be a conservative, what it means is that we become tribal and we defend other conservatives even when they do things that are wrong. That we don't discuss things that are horrible on our own side because we need to just make sure that we score wins in other ways and that is wrong. So that to me is the exact opposite of why I have this platform. I am not tribal. I want to expose things when they are bad on the left and I will also expose things when they are bad on the right. In the past, I've had mixed feelings about Owens. I've admired her tenacity, her determination, and her belief in the power of hard work and self-empowerment. However, I disagree with a lot of her takes. I've been suspicious of how well she can separate her personal feelings from getting to the truth, and I've noticed she can often remind me of an attack dog when she gets angry, gripping something, shaking hard, and not letting it go. I think she's very stubborn, which can be a positive attribute, but not when it blinds you to the possibility that you could be wrong. In short, I disagreed with Candice on a lot, but I did have some respect for her ambition and apparent forthright nature, because I believed on some level that she was honest and believed what she was saying. Respect which, after watching her Tate Puff piece, has totally vanished. I no longer think she's honest at all. In fact, I now think the opposite. I think she's one of the most dishonest people in media today. And that's really saying something. So this video I'm doing now isn't really about Andrew Tate, so I'm not so much going to be going into all of the lies that he told in that interview. Um, lies Candace let him get away with through either extreme lack of preparation or intentional collusion on her part. But if you would like to see how he probably lied many times, um, I urge you all to go and watch the Apostate Prophet stream on the interview. I will link it down below. He and David Wood did a brilliant job of going through all of, the, well, I don't know about all of them, but many of Andrew Tate's lies in that interview, showing receipts and evidence of 
how he lied, how he was lying, when he was lying, referring to the court documents and videos of him talking and other kinds of evidence. So they had proof to back that and they did that really brilliantly. So definitely go and watch that. Um, there's a side note as well, I really like his channel. It's a really, really good channel. Um, so I will just play this short clip that he put together of just one, just one instance that Andrew Tate lied in that interview. I didn't sell drugs. So when I was 24, 25, I sold drugs. Long time ago now. I didn't sell drugs. i be honest and open about my past. I was a fighter, but fighting wasn't paying the bills, sold drugs, whatever. I didn't sell drugs. So I'm selling drugs. I didn't sell drugs. I didn't really like selling drugs. I didn't sell drugs. I didn't like the anxiety. I didn't like the idea of getting caught. I didn't like the, uh, the violence, the stabbing. Someone tried to stab me. I didn't sell drugs. The thing is, you can't deny that the man is definitely a liar, whether he lied then or he's lying now. In which case, how can we trust anything that he says? You've got the right audience with me when, in terms of that. I think I think the media is the enemy of the American people. Yeah. That is why I, I, I liked Trump calling that out right away, talking about fake news. What I don't understand is why anybody listens to anything they say. I know. it is Because they've been caught lying so many times. Mm -hmm. Is it just because they lie on repeat over and over again to the point where people just accept it? Is it because it's cowardice and accepting that these people constantly lie to you makes you adopt a worldview which is scary because you have to now think for yourself? I'm not sure what it is, but how after, especially the last five to six years, especially the last five to six years, can you believe a word these people say to you? Well, because if they say it enough, it becomes true. And that's been, they, they've been able to show that, that if you say something over and over again to someone, they will accept it as a truth. Even Andrew doesn't understand why you'd listen to him. He probably thinks you're an idiot if you do. I mean, that's kind of his pattern of behavior, his MO. He deceives and tricks the women, and then he laughs behind their backs about it, about how stupid they are, how easily they believe him, how he tricks them. He scams the men and then goes and interviews and laughs about how stupid these men are and how he easily tr tricks them. So I don't understand why you all think you're so special or the little tater tots and that he's not lying to you and then laughing behind your back about how stupid and naive you are to believe him. For other videos, going through actual evidence and facts rather than feelings-based puff pieces with nothing of substance of the sort that Tucker and Candice did, Willie Mac Show's recent video on all the evidence against hate is brilliant. I will also link that down below. And Not So Erudite also did a stream just going through the War Room DM leaks, which was also fantastic. Um, so again, I will link that video as well down below. Why is it that all of these people, the apostate prophet, Erudite and Willie Mac, did a far better extensively researched job on reporting on the Tate case than huge media companies with God knows how many resources? There's something to be said for being independent and not attached to a particular ideology. As far as I know, all the people I named are independent, not strongly affiliated with either the right or the left, um, and they do a good job of referring to the facts rather than what they want to be true to support their team. The same can be said as well for Abbott and Preach and Destiny. Um, I know Destiny is political, but from what I've seen, he's also very good at being unbiased and calling out his own side. All of those people that I named have done a far better, more honest and unbiased job on the Tate situation than any big media company that I've seen. And yes, that includes The Daily Wire. So please watch those videos linked down below, particularly Apostate Prophet's video if you want proof that Andrew Tate lied many times in that Candace interview. I won't so much be doing that because you guys already know how I feel about him. He's behaved exactly as expected, so it's not a shock to me. This video will be mainly be focusing on Candace and her hypocrisy and dishonesty um, because the extent of it was actually quite shocking. I should also mention, I think Brittany Venti is someone else who's been calling out Andrew Tate for a very long time. I think she did a couple of streams back a few months ago where she was going through the evidence. Um, so again, that's worth mentioning her as well. So just to say, before we get into the video, after the Apostate Prophets video live stream on breaking down the Candace Owens Andrew Tate interview and all the many lies told by both parties really, um, she blocked him on Twitter. She blocked the Apostate Prophet on Twitter, which shows that she, she knows about the criticism of her dishonesty. She just doesn't care and doesn't want to correct it. Um, and the Apostate Prophet, he wasn't awful to her in the video. He just went through the facts and proved all the times that either she or Tate lied or were dishonest or hid the truth. Um, and like a coward, she blocked him and hasn't issued any corrections. And this, this was what he posted on YouTube. Um, and there it is. This is my clear confirmation that she is not ignorant. She's a grifter, a liar, an, al an ally of Tate, and a complicit supporter of sex trafficking. Fake conservative. And he linked his stream, and I urge you all please to go and watch that, because they did a really good job of just provably, I just don't know how, just proving all the lies. Um, 
with evidence, which of which Candace brought no evidence, but somehow she she thinks that she's right. As I said, I've never particularly been a fan of Candace Owens, but I didn't believe she was a grifter, like people accused her. I thought, sure, she's a bit extreme and annoying sometimes, but I think she probably believes what she says and she probably genuinely wants to help people. And then a couple of months ago, I came across two of her videos that really made me reconsider that. Um, they made me think, maybe she's not so honest after all. Maybe she is only saying what she thinks will appeal to her conservative audience. So what shocked me about these two videos was that they were released on the same day. On the same day, will not you remember that? Um, and they were so contradictory that her brazen hypocrisy was shocking to me. So the first video is a rant about how the actress Zendaya is sending a message that it's uncool not to be able to cook. That Zendaya is making young women aspire to be, quote, utterly helpless. This is all Candice says, what she says in this rant. That Zendaya is making motherhood and traditional femininity look uncool. That she's pushing young women to be pathetic and lazy and useless. Quoting Candace Owens here, women think being hopeless and helpless is cute. So you hear all that and you think, wow, that, that all sounds pretty bad. So with this damning judgment on all the reasons that Zendaya is ruining the world and making modern women useless and inspiring laziness and degrading society and helping tear apart the nuclear family, you must all be thinking, wow, what Zendaya said must be pretty extreme. She must have really said something awful about stay-at-home mothers or traditional women. She must really have been acting entitled or lazy and, or, or being a brat. Um, she must have been really making a statement about how being useless or rejecting femininity is empowering and something to be proud of. Yeah, so let's play the clip that set Candace off, shall we? You guys gotta teach me something because I do not know how to cook. How about that? Although, I learned a little dish the other day, a little pasta dish, and I really didn't have much in my fridge at all. And we made pasta, but we made it with like this avocado sauce, and it was like super easy, minimal ingredients, and it was freaking delicious. So I highly recommend that recipe. Thank you, Google. And it made me feel like I could cook because it was so easy. <laughs> yes, that's it. That's it. That shocking, appalling, degenerate clip that I don't even know how it's, how it's allowed to air on YouTube. It's probably making your eyes bleed. I mean, that is the reason that Zendaya is making it look cute for women to reject family life and become helpless and lazy, apparently, according to Candace Owens. Can someone please give me a reason how that kind of moral outrage over nothing is any different to what extreme leftists do when they take an innocuous comment and paint someone out to be a terrible person by interpreting it in the worst faith possible? This is why conservatives get accused of pearl clutching. You're no less of a snowflake or triggered Candace. You're the target of who you're directing it at, however, just happens to be different. What is... Zendaya was not acting like it was cool not to cook. Most of the clip, Candice, was taken up with her talking about a recipe that she recently learned. How scummy and bad faith do you have to be to interpret it in the way that you did? You know what that was from Zendaya? A self-deprecating comment as she complimented someone else's cooking. I actually read it as her being polite. You married an Englishman, Candice. You should be very familiar with self-deprecation as a form of social connection. She literally says in that as well, teach me how to cook. I see it as a humble offhand remark. <laughs> Zendaya is not a mother talking about how she doesn't need to care for her children or cook, LOL, hashtag modern women life. Zendaya is a 26-year-old Hollywood star with a very impressive career. Is it the end of the world that she's not a good cook? No! What's even your point here, Candice? That Zendaya is wasting time being a Hollywood star and should focus more on learning to cook? Why? That's not even good advice for her. That's actually terrible advice for her. I would say I think she invested her time wisely in learning the skills that she did because it paid off. She clearly invested a lot of time in her career in acting and learning how to be a good actress. And that's definitely paid off at this point. I think it would have been a waste of her time. If she'd spent that, in my opinion, spent a huge amount of that time learning to cook. She's still young. She's 26. It's ridiculous to make a big deal out of this. Did you know how to cook in your 20s, Candice, back when you were a liberal queen? It, this is just so silly. Zendaya made no degrading comments about housewives or women who like cooking. 
she actually, again, she was complimenting the cooking. Not every woman's life path needs to be settling down and being a trad housewife from your early 20s. That wasn't even your life path, Candice. You didn't settle down and have children till later. It's perfectly possible that Zendaya could do the same. To suggest as well that Zendaya is this symbol of being a helpless woman is also just really insulting and blatantly untrue. Zendaya is literally not reliant on anyone and her stellar career proves how hardworking and capable she is. But because she's not a good cook, she's making women utterly helpless somehow. Are you okay? You do realise that when she says she can't cook, she's just saying that she's not a very good one. But clearly she's capable of following a recipe, as she herself said. She's smart and competent. I think she'll be fine. When she needs to do it, she'll figure it out. Candace's rant where she, she implies that Zendaya is making it look glamorous to be helpless and not be able to cook. That is so, such a silly, bad faith interpretation of that clip. If anything, again, she's complimenting the cooking and saying she needs to learn more and and talking about how she learned the recipe. How, if anything, isn't she making it glamorous to learn how to cook? She was talking about how she made this really good recipe and how, oh, I just... So obviously this is a very bad take from Candice, even taken on its own. But what really makes it terrible is that on the very same day, she released a video defending Andrew Tate and falsely claiming that they had no evidence against him, something she would have realised is a lie if she'd bothered doing even five minutes of research. This is why Candace thinks that Andrew Tate was arrested, right? Quote, This is atrocious. You can't simply hold someone in custody, she's talking about. You can't simply hold someone because you don't like the content of what they put out on the internet. That's not why he was arrested, Candace. Not because of his YouTube video. What, you, what are you talking about? You think he was arrested? You think he was arrested because of his YouTube videos? And also, I think it's, it's worth noting, the only evidence that Candace Owens referred to in that video to prove that Tate was innocent, the only evidence in that whole video that she referred to to prove that Andrew Tate was innocent and has been unfairly stitched up was his own tweets. I'm not joking. Watch the video. That, that, that's the standard these days. The journalistic standard. Someone is accused of a crime and your only research into it is you look at the accused Twitter? I feel like most journalists would be immediately fired for that. The only research you do into whether someone is innocent or guilty is you look at his own words. Are you insane? Did none of her colleagues call Candace and tell her that she's got to put more effort in than that? Ben, maybe you should give her a ring and kindly suggest that she needs to stop being so lazy and, was it, helpless and hopeless in her reporting because it reflects badly on all of you and discredits the entire company. She also said, quote, This is terrifying. If you are an individual and you believe in morality and you believe in a justice system that operates without corruption, then you should be speaking out against what's happening to Andrew Tate. Even if you think that Tate is innocent, objectively, you must agree that a journalist only looking at his own words for evidence and then telling her audience that he is innocent and they all have a moral duty to support him is gross negligence at best. This is appalling. I mean, this is layer levels of stupidity, dishonesty and lack of research. But the difference is, Leia is a sycophantic loser who wants to shag Andrew and is desperately trying to get his attention, emphasis on desperately, and is not hired by a professional media organisation. Candice should know better. So, so let's get this straight, Candice. This is, this is, these are her two narratives on the same day. Let's get this straight. Andrew Tate, alleged rumour, sex trafficker and confirmed degenerate is a positive figure for masculinity which is why they're shutting him down however zendaya based on one offhand innocuous comment is a terrible role model for young girls and is making them lazy and helpless and all of this on the same day i'm supposed to believe that this is honest and fair reporting without a hint of tribalism am i really all her all her moral grandstanding a little while ago about how when she was calling out stephen crowder 
about how, oh, we've got to call out our own side. Conservatives can't be complicit in bad behaviour just because someone's on our team. I'm not tribalistic. Oh, she was so proud of how non-tribalistic she was, wasn't she? What disingenuous fake outrage. Taking the trad position against Zendaya that she thinks her audience want to hear, even if in the context of that situation with Zendaya, it makes no sense. But then giving an actual degenerate a free pass because a big chunk of her audience are also fans of him and he is more right-leaning. Now that's what I call unfair. What an inconsistent double standard. I just want you all to think about what she's suggesting. Really, please, think about that. Zendaya's innocuous comment is leading to the downfall of modern women. However, Andrew Tate and his degenerate materialistic lifestyle, even illegal activity aside, from a conservative point of view, he has a degenerate materialistic lifestyle, that's making men better. Oh, Zendaya making women worse, because she said she said a comment. Tate making men better, because he ran a cam girl studio and scammed people. She suggested this on the same day. How am I supposed to take her seriously and not think she's a complete hypocrite? I think it might also be worth mentioning that, as Candace herself has said, she and Tate have mutual friends, and she met him for drinks in London a couple of years ago. But I'm sure that will not at all influence her journalistic integrity or how she handles any of this. I just want you all to think about what Candace would be saying if it was a left-wing journalist um, who had personal ties with someone that they were dishonestly reporting on. Imagine the nuclear tantrum she would throw about corruption in left-wing media. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. So Zendaya is a bad role model for young girls. But Candice, on the other hand, is inspiring them into a positive, traditional lifestyle. Going for drinks in London with a self-proclaimed pimp. Is that a more conservative example you're offering the youth? Oh, very impressive. So anyway, Candice ended that video with, quote, I would love to interview him. I would do it fair. I would examine the facts of the case. And thus far, there doesn't seem to be a case to examine any facts of. Yes, Candice, you irredeemable hack. There won't be any facts if the only thing you're sourcing is Andrew Tate's own words. So I'm afraid this is now going to be a very jarring tone change given the topic, but I gotta support this channel somehow. <laughs>Are you tortured by never knowing what happened to the unreleased scripts from my unfinished video series, like parts two and three from my review of Netflix's Winx? Are you kept awake at night, pondering what mysteries the 30 minutes I cut from my Rolo video could hold? 30 key minutes where I addressed his unhinged rant that it's impossible for women to have heroes' journeys or be good protagonists. Did did you enjoy channel videos like I become a narcissist, I declare war on mosquitoes, and of course, ha, the classic, I talk and 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 talk. If the answer to any of those questions is yes, then joining my online cult could be the right choice for you. That's right. Over at The Authentic Observer on Patreon, you'll get access to unreleased scripts from videos I never uploaded, the cut sections from longer videos, if there are any, and hours and hours of unedited rambles. I talk about everything, like how important mood is in storytelling and the difference, if any, between masculine and feminine points of view in writing, or a video discussing the poetry of some of my patrons, or oh, that time Fresh and Fit had a proud grapist on their podcast. Remember Scientology? <laughs> Old news! The Authentic Observer is the hip new cult on the block. All the cool kids are signing up. You do want to be cool, don't you? There are so many options to choose from. Our entry-level tier, Skirts and Stockings, is a great choice for beginners. Overgrown Harry Potter kids may feel more at home as a devoted follower of Asus. And for the alpha males amongst you, the woodshed could be just what you need. Just don't let Rolo see you. No one knows what he does to the men he catches. The Authentic Observer cult operates on an honesty system. All tiers have the same access to content, the idea being to support the channel and the content produced here at whatever level you feel appropriate. At the moment, I don't take sponsorships, so if you value the content on this channel and would like to support me, that's where to do it. 
link down below in the description box. So if, like myself, you enjoy listening to the sound of my voice, hop on over to Patreon for an offer you don't want to miss. Join a cult today! So when Candice actually got around to interviewing Tate, how did she do? Did she fairly examine the facts of the case as she promised her audience she would? Well, she says she did. But from what I saw, I very much doubt her research ever did go further than the accused criminal's own words. <laughs> I mean, there, is, there are so many things. Again, watch the Apostate Prophet stream if you want a breakdown of just the lies. So many things. But one of the most um, egregious is in that interview, she lies and she says that the definition of sex trafficking has expanded over time. She kind of implies that that's what the Romanian government is doing, is that they're widening the definition of sex trafficking to include what Tate's done, which... No, that's the definition of sex trafficking, and what Tate, Tate has done is very firmly fallen into that. But no, according to Candice, what Andrew Tate is doing is exactly the same as 90 Day Fiancé, the, the reality show. I'm not kidding. She also, she lies about what it says in the indictment, um, and she says, she says she read it. She says she read the indictment, but she's incorrect about what it says in it. Um, and she also spoon-feeds him his defence throughout, throughout this interview. So either Candace Owens read the case files and she lied, or she's lying about reading the case files. Because he lied about the case against him and she agreed with him. Again, watch the Apostate Prophet stream on it. It's fantastic. So it became very clear right from the start that this wasn't going to be a serious interviewer giving him a grilling, going over the facts, then attempting to find the truth, but rather a wishy-washy puff piece where they sit together and have a bit of a giggle, with Candice throwing the occasional softball question his way at the same time as she hands him his defence on a platter. I'm not joking, she would ask him like a question that was not even a hard-hitting question, but like a little bit a little bit more of a hard question than the previous softball questions. But at the same time she asked it, she would like answer for him partly and be like, well, I would probably say the reason you did this was because of this and I like, kind of answer for it. And then he'd be like, yeah, yeah, that was, it was, it was a joke. Within two minutes, I'm not joking. I'm not, it, it's two minutes, within two minutes of the interview starting, he's already compared himself to Napoleon, Charlemagne and Genghis Khan, because of course he has. And Candice sits and nods and smiles and mentions how they met and hung out in London and lets him get away with it. Oh, brilliant. I mean, I was worried for a minute, but I'm glad to see that this is going to be a very serious Dissecting the Truth interview where we talk about a serious criminal case and not just three hours of licking Andrew Tate's bollocks. This is a serious interview, Candice, where you're really pushing him on the facts and giving him a grilling? We've, we've, we've let him compare himself to, to the most, some of the most grandiose, impressive historical figures of all time. We, 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 we're doing that, are we, in the first couple of minutes? You're a joke. He's so transparent, I'm genuinely baffled how people can take him seriously. He's just a delusional egomaniac. I actually don't understand why so many people are falling for it, even at this point, even with all the evidence. And I don't, I don't want to call those people stupid, but I'm, I'm finding it really hard not to at this point. I, <laughs> it's just so obvious, just isn't... But, you know, I, I won't, because I get it. Manipulating, lying to people, and creating a cult of personality is what he does. And as a side note, by the way, I never again want to hear that women are more illogical and easily controlled than men. I don't think any of you can ever claim that after this large-scale brain rot on display over the past few months. Frankly, this is embarrassing beyond belief. Any respect I had for Candice, and it wasn't a huge amount, but I did have some, as I said, all of that is gone and I can no longer trust anything she says. She should never be taken seriously in investigative journalism again. Or media commentary or anything again. This is either shocking negligence and incompetence or, worst case scenario, a knowing cover-up. This has blackened the name of the Daily Wire. <laughs> Not in talking to Tate. No, no, no. I don't have a problem with that. I've always been opposed to censoring him. Again, you can see my track record with that. I've been very outspoken in that he should, I again, anti-censorship. He should not be censored. If there's criminal activity, then that should be the thing that he's prosecuted for. I've always been opposed to censoring him. Um, so it's not in the talking to Tate or platforming him that I've got a problem with. It's in the allowing him to lie, not correcting him, running a sickening, sycophantic puff piece and not challenging him on camera, that is appalling. Gross negligence, 
or extreme corruption. You decide. In the Candace interview, Andrew Tate also says that he doesn't believe a man should operate in a frame where they're ever sorry for anything. Firstly, your masculine king talks like a leftist, and secondly, this is Mr. Accountable and Responsible, the man who has as part of his ideology that a man should never be sorry for anything he's done. Oh, but it's women. Women are the ones who can't admit when we're wrong. Your movement is a joke. An inability to feel remorse or guilt, by the way, is what we call a personality disorder, not masculinity. And Candice doesn't even pull him up on this. It, honestly, the whole interview was so pathetic. Nothing, just she never, never even mind the illegal legal stuff. She never even disagrees with him. The whole, it's it's pathetic to watch. She doesn't counter anything that he says, doesn't disagree with him really on anything. Um, <laughs> Candace, you claim to be a Christian. And at this point, I really am thinking it is that you're only claiming to be a Christian. Um, shouldn't you have a problem with someone rejecting the very core principles of remorse, forgiveness and redemption that are inherent to Christianity? This is what I mean by her totally abandoning all her fierce principles when it serves her career or her political side. She doesn't keep the same energy when she's dragging Cardi B or Kim Kardashian over the coals. Why is it different with Andrew Tate? Oh, I think I know why. Because it's helpful, isn't it, Candice? Because you've got a lot of the same audience, haven't you, Candice? And he's right-leaning, isn't he, Candice? Like you are. All he does, the whole interview, is deflect onto other issues. It's, it's honestly pathetic. Why are people concerned with me? There's this bad thing that's happening in the world and this bad thing that's happening in the world. Just because there are other bad things happening in the world doesn't mean that you're not also doing bad things, Andrew. That's not how logic works, okay? All he does is deflect onto other issues, shift responsibility and attention onto others, and how everyone is flawed. So, you know, he's, he's, not, he's, not really, he's not really outstanding in that way. Like, everyone, everyone's kind of flawed. He's just like a normal person. Provably lie as well, provably lie, um, and psychologically wank himself off and humble brag about how he's the best man who's ever lived. And Candace is his willing, unquestioning, brain-dead audience, like a clapping seal. Isn't there a relevant Bible quote here, Candace? Something about, I don't know, false prophets maybe? Worshipping idols? You hate celebrity worship, Candace, and the degeneracy that they spread culturally. Um, but the rules, the rules don't apply to Tate, apparently. No. Brainlessly following him is based and moral. He's just, he's just such a narcissist. How are people falling for this? He spends the beginning of the interview telling Candace a sob story about how hard his life was, Aww, which is why he should be excused past bad behaviour. This is utterly pathetic. This is not masculine integrity. This is weaponised victimhood. Are you high? Just because he says it in a firm tone, some, somehow the meanings of the words change. Are you dogs who only respond to tone of voice? So someone can tell you how much of a victim they are. Boo hoo, don't hold me accountable for my actions. I grew up in Luton. But if they say it aggressively, they're your stoic alpha hero now. Woof woof, pack leader never wrong. Listen to what he is saying, not the smoke and mirrors and misdirections and charm and charisma that he's putting in the way to manipulate you. Strip it down, what's he saying? What questions is he actually answering? What's the substance of his answers? Not much. And Candace is eating it up because she only cares about accountability when it's people who disagree with her politics. He literally, says to her face, watch the interview, he says this, he says to her face that he's not sorry for anything and she doesn't care. Illegal activity aside, Candice, you're a conservative Christian media personality. You should have a problem with his past. <laughs> you should have a problem with that. You should have a problem with someone who's done the things he's done, even if you think he's innocent of crimes. You should have a problem with him not being sorry. She has an advert for a Christian prayer app and a Christian university, by the way, in this Andrew Tate interview. It's, 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 it's so ridiculous. It's like a parody. What a joke. She has no Christian standards. I, I just want to say as well, conservative Christians online, I'm realising more and more as time goes on, conservative Christians online have no integrity, no principles. You lot are as much of, sell of a sellout as everyone else, as far as I can tell. Most of you, a few genuine people, but apart from that, you know better. Um, I'm, I'm so disappointed in them, genuinely. I'm not even a Christian, but I've always liked Christianity. I, I, respect, I respect it. Um, I find a lot of th things I admire and like about it. I find a lot of peace in it. Um, and I, I just feel so let down by so many of them. It's really sad to see. Really sad. And again, I'm not even a Christian. 
Um, so don't know how they're feeling. Can I also stress that Candace Owens built a brand on telling the black community in America that a rough background or hardship was not an excuse for bad behavior. But when it comes to Andrew Tate, she will sit there and make excuses like, you and I are both from a poor background and people don't understand the things you'll do to survive. Um, no, Candace. Not everyone from Luton had to become a criminal or exploit others to survive. What a crock of shit. And that's anti to literally everything that you preach. I no longer believe this woman believes in anything she claims to stand for. Guys, I don't, I don't know, I don't know if you know this, but it's impossible to survive if you don't have a Bugatti. <gasps> what a spoiled little princess he is. How is he any different from like Kim Kardashian or Paris Hilton? I can't survive without my material goods. People don't understand the things you'll do to survive. He wasn't surviving. He was exploiting people to become super wealthy. What are you talking about, Candace? You didn't even pull him up on that. Oh, it's a, it was a joke. It's a joke. He just, honestly, throughout so many, watch, watch the interview. Watch the interview. He just makes excuses like a crybaby because, wow, my mummy and daddy got divorced. And Candace laps it up because she actually doesn't have any integrity. Candace is no longer allowed to criticise people who riot or rob things and use the excuse that they had to do it to survive. She's proven that she actually doesn't believe that. Another inconsistency in this interview that Candace lets fly because of course she does, Tate also says that women are emotional and easily controlled earlier in the interview, um, which is his reason for why women shouldn't be in charge. But then later in the interview, he says, women can make their own decisions and it's misogynistic actually to say that he manipulated them. So which is it, genius? Candace agrees with him as well, both times. Like, how is that not the most transparent thing you've ever seen? He's like, it's the most transparent media spin. He's coming out with, oh, actually you're a misogynist. Um, if you say that, um, um, that, I w that I'm a misogynist, that makes you a misogynist. You say I mistreated women because I'm a misogynist. Actually, you're a misogynist. It's, it's like the most like low IQ attempt at spinning, the, twisting the narrative. It's like when he said that anyone who said Romania was corrupt and that's why he moved there was racist towards Romanians. It's like when he did that, it's the same thing. Even though he said that's why he moved there. He's like, oh, actually you're racist uh, if you do that. How is anyone buying this? <laughs> oh no, not Candace Owens interviewing me. What a, what a hard hitting journalist searching for the truth. The audacity of Andrew Tate, by the way, to call women irrational and falling for emotional arguments in this interview. Meanwhile, his entire defense is purely optics based and emotional with no real facts, evidence or real defense. Um, and men are eating it up. He is lying to you and he knows it and you believe him. He thinks you're stupid. If he's so innocent, like you guys claim, then why is he consistently lying about his behavior? Why is it so easy to catch him in a lie? If he didn't do nothing and the Matrix is out to get him, why would he have to lie and delete website pages and deny they ever existed and cover things up? He would be open and upfront about everything. I've always said this on my stream. If they hide it, then it's the truth. If they have to delete it, then it's the truth. You are clowns for asking any of us to trust him based on that. Candace Owens then pays lip service to the idea that she's really challenging Tate and getting to the truth by playing a clip that's been circulating from his pimping hose degree course. Um, and this was what cemented in my mind that Candace is actually maliciously dishonest rather than just incompetent because Candace Owens' team cut the most damning part of the clip out. So she and Andrew watch this very short clip where he's talking about sleeping with the women that work for him, you know, like they're doing the lover boy method. Um, and then he says, after they watch the clip, he kind of says something like, oh yeah, you know, maybe that's a bit embarrassing. You could say that's immoral. Um, that's was immoral of me to say, but none of it's criminal. Candice agrees with this. She says, right. Meanwhile, her and her team must knowingly have cut out the part in that same clip where he admits to stealing money from those women and tax fraud. Candace Owens is a liar and should never be trusted ever again. This is a puff piece and a cover-up, not journalism. I just can't believe, I'm afraid, that with the whole team of The Daily Wire behind her, that she's done this unknowingly. Really? The researchers didn't know? They cut out the rest of that clip where he admits to criminal activity, and Candace Owens allows him to lie to her audience and say there's nothing criminal. 
something she goes, yes, right, she agrees with, and they present this lie to the Daily Wire's audience, and they have the audacity to claim that the mainstream media is lying about him. This is one of the worst examples of journalism I've ever seen. It actually reads to me like a pre-planned interview. I'm not joking, like when I saw it, it looks like how you'd expect an interview to go if, it, if she was his PR manager and they were brainstorming how to spin this in the best way possible. Also, seeing as truth is so important to people like Matt Walsh, Jordan Peterson and Michael Knowles, other employees of the Daily Wire, I eagerly await them setting the record straight, standing by their principles and calling out dishonesty, provable lies and degeneracy, even if it's coming from their own side, even if it's coming from a colleague like Candice. If you stand for truth, it would be nice to see you prove it. Maybe one of them has said something about it. No, I, I don't know. Um, but this is so beyond the pale of what they should find acceptable in a colleague whose work also reflects on them and their integrity, and on the whole Daily Wire. It's not her talking to Tate that's the problem, as I've said. It's the cover-up and lies in that interview, which reflects on the Daily Wire's team of researchers, it reflects directly on the, those workers, um, and investigative journalists, who are either grossly incompetent or just plain gross. She's a disgrace. The interview, uh, at one point as well, then just becomes all about how being a man is demonised. That that's then becomes our conversation. And how, you know, it's despicable of what main, mainstream culture is doing to men and to masculinity. And what I will say is that what I find despicable and offensive to men is Tate equating his behaviour with masculinity, hiding behind men like a coward to excuse his own wrongdoing, which is worse than most of the stuff the left throws at men. And Candace is agreeing with all that as well. So well done, Candace. You're really presenting a great image of men by excusing Tate's behaviour because, oh, you know, masculinity. Being a man is not bad. Being masculine is not bad. But Andrew Tate is sure selling the idea that it is. It's your behaviour that's bad, Andrew, not men. And it would be nice if he could stop being a coward and own up to it. I mean, most of it, Candace and Tate spend most of the interview sitting and morally posturing about how degenerate the West is. But Tate, you know, Andrew Tate and his behaviour is just flawed and real, man. People like realness from their idols. I'm not kidding, she basically says that. Um, no, Candice, the things Andrew Tate has admitted to are not just a real human being being raw. Um, it's not something everyone has done because we all make mistakes, do a little bit of trafficking time to time. Um, it is not normal human behaviour. It's actually what I would call inhuman behaviour, lack of empathy, extreme narcissism. These are rare personality defects. The reason most people aren't like him isn't because Tate's just the bestest like he believes and they're not, not as good as him, which is why I haven't attained his level but because they have a conscience that gets in the way, and Andrew Tate doesn't. His wealth and status is not because he has something they don't have, but because he's lacking in something other people have. He's not more of a man, he's less of one, an incomplete half-man lacking some essential part of being human. Remorse is something he doesn't feel. That's not normal, Candice, and I know you know that, because if he was on the left, you would be saying he's one of the most degenerate evil people in the world today, but he's on your team, so you don't care. At one point in this video as well, which I found outrageous, so they talk about this whole Adam22 situation, which I don't know a huge amount about, but I, I know who he is. He's He does podcasts, doesn't he? Um, I think his wife, is he a, is he a porn star? I think his wife, I think maybe both he and his wife are. There was something where he was like, um, saying to other men that they should film a scene with his wife. I think that was roughly what it was. And he, her and Andrew Tate talk about this. Um, and she says, Candace says, she's, she was talking about Adam 22 and his wife, she says, I think that's so disgusting. She says, she basically says that Adam 22 is treating his wife like a slave by trying to pimp her out to other men. The irony of saying this to Andrew Tate, by the way, the, the, I just can't. Um, but she's, she, has, she has the audacity. She, she talks, she says, she says, this is like a master-slave relationship. And she says, that's not what masculinity is. So that's disgusting, and that's not what real masculinity, healthy masculinity and femininity is. And Andrew Tate agrees with her. Are you that stupid, Candice? Or have you just not heard how he talks about his relationships with women? I'm pretty sure in some of the leaked... Like, there's... Oh my goodness. To Really? You think... You think how Andrew Tate talks about how his relationships go with the women, that there isn't some element of master-slave dynamic there. If you're going to say that about Adam 22, you're really not going to say that about Andrew Tate, who puts his girlfriends on webcam for other men. 
you are so you are you are just you are just you're such a hypocrite you're saying that to take like oh like you're chatting with him friendly like oh my god can you believe Adam 22 did this isn't that that gross but you're not calling him out and you you're 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 you are you are something else also, what's interesting is Scandrick talked about, you know, how he needs to have absolute power and control over his harem of women. And I just want to play these clips of what Andrew Tate thinks about absolute power. I don't think people understand how evil absolute power will make a person. I don't think people understand how petty and how vindictive and how degenerate absolute power will make people. Because if you're in charge of the entire world and you have unlimited money, what's going to make you happy? A Ferrari? You've had Ferraris your whole life. Boring. All that you care about is power, compliance. It's all funny to you. It's vindictive. It's petty. Why not? You're in charge. For the same reason, if you're in charge of a big company, you're like, you know, I want you all in at 8 45 tomorrow. Why not? It's a power play. Ego, status, respect, all the things we are talking about earlier. It's so funny. He's just describing himself, isn't he? If I had to be pessimistic about why they're doing it, pessimistic and also very realistic. They want to cause absolute chaos and confusion because during chaos and confusion, you can implement anything. Of course, slavery. Then, it's slavery, right? I love the irony of Andrew Tate talking about how the government is evil for trying to control the people with chaos and confusion. Meanwhile, creating chaos and confusion is literally his advice to men to get women to comply. You create chaos and you confuse them. Uncertainty, fear, stuff like that, you know? Oh, I believe, I believe, and I agree with him what he says when the, the government does stuff like that as well. And I agree with him that it's a deeply evil thing to do. And I think Andrew Tate knows a lot about psychological manipulation and government tactics. I think, in fact, he, he practices that in his own life. And I can't believe you didn't pull him up on that, Candice. She also says, to, again, I just can't believe... <laughs> she says in this interview, Candice said, it just becomes like a chat where they're just like reminiscing and talking together about like the state of the world. It's not an interview. It's not a proper interview of her trying to get to the bottom of his charges. It's ridiculous. Um, but she says at one point to him that women have been conditioned to behave like sluts. And isn't this terrible? Imagine sitting and saying, women have been conditioned to behave like sluts. Isn't it terrible? Imagine saying that to Andrew Tate, given his entire business model. You're a joke, Candice. And I know Candice can look into things and um, be critical of things because she did it with Crowder. She called him out for lying in an inconsistent narrative. You know whose narrative is the most inconsistent in the world? Andrew Tate's. Imagine calling Stephen Crowder an abusive monster, which she did for how he treats the women in his life, yet at the same time running cover for the Tates. Yes, that video from Crowder was bad, but it was only a fraction of terrible compared to Andrew Tate and his behavior and all the things that he's admitted to. Candace is tribal. She is tribal and an ideologue. The only reason she called out Steven Crowder is because they have personal beef. They like had little spats behind the scenes. She doesn't care about morality or being consistent or calling out bad behavior. She's proven that time and time again. She just thought it'd be good to, so she's taking out her personal issues and personal beef and then thought she'd use that also as, um, as an opportunity to morally grandstand about how she also calls out people on her own side. I don't like Crowder. I think that clip of him with his wife is pretty damning. Um, it's a bad look to be a grown man and so aggressively berating your eight months pregnant wife, especially when you claim to stand for family values. However, Crowder was also right um, about Candice when he said she's like the trashy drunk girl at a bar getting into fights over the slightest thing. If you're in her clique, um, she'll cover for you no matter what you do. But if you piss her off or she decides she doesn't like you, she'll throw a drink in your face and ruin your reputation because on the inside, she's an aggressive 16 year old girl. Zendaya said one innocuous comment that could be taken the wrong way. <gasps> well, Candice will bitch to all her friends about her. Can you guys believe she said that? She so obviously meant it like this. No, she did. We shouldn't hang out with her anymore. That was so gross what she said. Oh my God, I hate her. But when popular boy Andrew behaves despicably, she'll giggle on his arm. You're so bad. I can't believe you said that. <laughs> no, it was funny though. No, you guys, I don't fancy him. He's not that bad. You just don't understand him. You've been so dramatic. Oh my God, stop being so sensitive. Why are you crying? <laughs> yeah, he pulled up your skirt in front of everyone and pushed you into the wall to make his friends laugh and then refused to apologize because sorry isn't the frame he operates in. But it was just a joke, calm down. This is why people don't think you're cool. It was actually pretty funny if you could have seen your face. Like stop being such a weirdo feminist. This is why boys won't date you. Anyway, are you guys going to his party on Friday? That's the caliber of journalist we can expect from the Daily Wire. Oh goody, I'm glad to see alternative media isn't becoming what they hate. 
So there's one quote that Andrew Tate said in this interview that really stood out to me, and I would like to share these words of wisdom with you now. Quote, Only a coward would berate a very nervous, scared woman. I agree. And if those leaks and what he's talked about on video is true, pretty solid evidence at this point, then by his own definition, Andrew Tate is the biggest coward to ever live. Well done, everyone. A self-described coward is the biggest masculine hero on the internet. The end of the world is nigh. Going back to Candace's earlier call that anyone who claims to care about morality and justice should be speaking up in the Tate's defence, I'll refer her to the moving words of Tristan Tate when he was talking about scamming a desperate man out of his life savings. No mercy. In this life, there are predators and prey. Guess it's not so fun when you're the ones being hunted, gentlemen. These are the people Candace Owens, conservative Christian and crusader of honesty and family values, stands with. The Tates have spent a career rejecting mercy and compassion, and now they and their fans think they can turn around when it suits them and demand they're shown those things they've always disdained as weak and useless and pointless? No, 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 no. Let's stay consistent, boys. Why shouldn't the Romanian justice system be ruthless? That's what Tristan wants. If he's the prey in this scenario, well, I guess that's just bad luck. Now that's not my ideology, but play stupid games, win stupid prizes and get what you deserve. Do unto others, or you might not like it when your own philosophy comes back to bite your face off. It's known as poetic justice, and it's entirely self-inflicted. The Tates are not victims here, though they're, they're, they're very good at playing them, um, and also at getting lots and lots of men to white knight for their douchebags in distress act, and that's the state of masculine gurus these days. How noble. What is what does the next five years look like for you? Prison, probably. That's the stupidest thing you've said this whole interview, Candice, and that's saying something. So we actually have footage of Tate admitting to crimes. Footage that Candice apparently refuses to look at. We have him provably lying many times. Lying so often, it seems compulsive at this point. Um, but somehow, Candice Owens' idea of cracking the case is just asking him if he did it. Well, the accused criminal said no, guys. What else could I possibly do to look into this? Oh, case closed. A job for the Daily Wire. Well done. If someone wants me to believe he's innocent, have an actual competent journalist interview him. Actually question him on the things people want to know and see if he has good answers. I recommend Destiny. I think he's good faith. He can engage civilly with people he disagrees with. He's very good at asking the right questions and pushing people on what they mean. I think he's also highly logical and reasonable. So why doesn't Tate talk to him if he really wants to put everyone's concerns to bed? If he truly has nothing to hide? I think that would set a lot of people's minds at ease, Andrew. So if you're, you're, they're, they're doing a stitch upon you, I'm sure Destiny would be willing to hear if you have the evidence of not, 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 not just charisma and charm and manipulation and smoke and mirrors and bullshitting, but if you have the actual evidence to, you know, disprove the claims against you, why not talk to Destiny? I'm sure he'd be willing to hear you out. You've got nothing to hide. Speak to him. I think Destiny would ask questions people actually want an answer for, um, and not just Candace Owens running cover for three hours straight that gets to the bottom of nothing and refutes nothing, and is only really preaching to the choir or to people who know nothing about this. Anyone who actually knows the slightest thing about everything going on knows that he just spent the whole time lying and it hasn't changed anyone's minds. Only people who don't know anything. And it easily swayed by a, a nice interview set and a friendly interview and a bit of a bit of friendliness and charm and there was nothing of value in that though there was no evidence no facts it's all feelings based to finish i have only one thing to say to candace but i don't think she'll listen to me maybe she'll only listen to herself so i'll refer her back to her own words just imagine that she's saying the name andrew tate rather than stephen crowder and so the question that i will ask is how many people are going to allege abuse from stephen crowder before we listen before we stop saying he's one of us because he says things that he agrees with. We purport that we are the party of family values. How can you look at that video and defend him in any way? How can you look at that video and not roundly condemn this and say this is not something that actually represents the things that we believe?